Hi, my name's Chris. Welcome to my studio. In this video, I'm going to show you how I set up a still life for a watercolor painting. Let's get started. So you might be asking yourself, why would I want to paint from a still life? Why not just paint from a photograph? I believe there are a few benefits of painting from still lifes as opposed to from a photograph. First of all, painting real life objects. There is a lot of benefit of painting in front of your subject matter and seeing it not through the two dimensional plane of a photograph, but actually seeing that object in real life and painting it. That's the first benefit. The second benefit is that you have a lot more control over your setting for your subject when you use uh, a still life because you can set up the lighting just right, you can set up the background, you can control the placement of the objects. You can't really do that in a photograph unless you took it yourself. Uh, even then, uh, out in the real world, it's very hard to control the lighting and that kind of thing. In a still life, you have complete control over the lighting, the uh, setting of the picture, the layout of the uh, objects, and it, it really can help to get just the right setup, just the right painting that you wanna paint. So you have a lot of control. And then number three is that you can actually simplify your paintings a little bit. And this is especially important for beginning painters. What do I mean by that? When you set up a still life, you can put a very simple background in place, uh, a simple foreground. Uh, again, by controlling the light, uh, you can control the shadows and how they're cast. And you can really simplify your painting to a great deal in a still life, uh, removing clutter, removing distracting elements. And that is very important when you're first learning how to paint. One of the hardest things about painting, uh, for example, out plein air, uh, which is outdoor painting um, and that kind of thing is that there can often be a lot of distractions in the frame of the painting and that can be difficult for beginners. So simplifying your paintings. Okay, so how do you set up your still life? There are three considerations. First, your light box, then your lighting, and then the placement of your objects and your composition. Let's talk about those in order. The first step is setting up your light box. Actually, I've heard them called both a shadow box and a light box, so you can decide. Uh, the light box, or shadow box, has two primary purposes, and that is to control the light that's hitting your objects that you place inside of it, and also to provide a way to put a, like a, a backdrop behind the subject, uh, easily draping over fabric or other types of things in the, in the painting. So having a shadow box like this is really handy, really simple. It can just be a couple boards like I have here taped together. Uh, you want to create at least like three sides. Sometimes people put a top on it as well to really control the light. But you want to set up some kind of shadow box for your still life. The next step to setting up your still life is to set up your lighting. You can see here I have a small spotlight. Uh, all the things that I show you in the video today, there'll be links in the description below where you can purchase these. This is just a really nice uh, LED spotlight that put out, puts out a lot of light. When setting up a still life, you always want to have just one primary light source. It's really important. And you want to place that light source uh, to one side or the other of your object. You don't want to place it uh, directly in front of your object, as you see I do here, because it really flattens the light. Uh, you want to have a nice strong shadows in your uh, subject, and that's best accomplished by having the light placed to one side or the other at about a 45 degree angle, not completely over to one side of the object, usually, uh, because then the, the shadows are a little too large, but neither do you want it, again, too far to the front. Somewhere around 45 degree angle to the subject is pretty good for uh, your single light source. Now I went ahead and turned off the overhead lights in my studio, so the only light is this single LED spotlight. You can see the amazing, strong contrast that it creates by having this single light source. So your objective with your lighting is to create really strong shadows as well as uh, some strong highlights on your subject and a nice gradual change from light to dark. So what we see here is a really dramatic lighting. This might be a little too dramatic. You might not want to have quite such uh, strong lighting. 
Okay, now I've added a little bit more light into the room, some natural light coming from a window. And this, in addition to the spotlight, creates not quite such a dramatic or high contrast lighting situation. I think that this is good lighting for my still life. Okay, the third step in setting up your still life is to think about the composition. The composition has to do with a number of things. First of all, the frame through which you're going to view your subject. You want to decide if you're using a horizontal format or a vertical format. It can be really handy just to uh, uh, grab a uh, mat board like you see here and view your subject through that to decide how you want to format your painting. But composition isn't just about format and framing, it's also about the placement of objects in the frame. As you can see here, I have a single mango that I want to paint, and this would be a great subject matter, and especially for a beginner, a nice simple painting. However, you might also want to add other objects to the painting. If you decide to use more than one object, it's really important that you consider the placement of those objects within the frame. First of all, you don't really want to ever line your objects up in a single line like this. Typically doesn't make for a very strong composition. Rather, you want to layer your objects, overlapping them, some in front of others, until you feel that you've developed an interesting composition. If you place additional items in your frame like you see I've done here, you want to make sure that that objects don't leave the frame right at the corner of the frame. As you can see, the handle on this copper pot, uh, it leaves at kind of an awkward place right at the corner, and you typically want to avoid that. There's nothing wrong with having objects outside the frame, as you can see I've done here, but you need to balance those objects within the frame, and you really don't want to cut an object right in half, just like I did with the apple here. This is a much better composition. So putting together a composition can be a lot of fun. Just start putting things in the frame and arranging them in different ways, making sure they're overlapping, they have a nice sense of placement, and just keep working at it until you find something you like. One thing you can do is just look at your composition through the frame of your camera, as I'm doing here, because the camera offers you an automatic frame, a horizontal one, anyways, that you can use to create your composition. I'm kind of liking this. So once again, the benefits of a still life painting. First of all, you're painting from real life, real objects, as you see here. You have a lot of control over the light and the placement of your objects and your composition. And lastly, you have the ability to simplify, which again is important for beginners. Now this is not a very simple composition. I've added so many things here. This is getting to be pretty complex. So let's simplify the composition again, down to just my mango. There you go, I like that. This is my next still life painting, a simple mango. Check out my video of the watercolor painting of this mango. It's on my channel. Also, I would love it if you'd comment down below and share what kind of still life objects and subjects you like to paint. And finally, if you found this video to be helpful, please subscribe to my channel and consider hitting the notification bell so you'll be notified every time I put out a new video. Thanks, have a great day.